Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to go over six of the most controversial products in the heating and air industry. But before we dive into it, please click that subscribe button. Thank you. Hey guys, we're going to do a video on the six most controversial products in the heating and air industry. I get comments on my videos all the time. We've actually talked about some of these products on our channel before. I'm going to go through each one of them and tell you why they are controversial. The first one is a product that we call Leak Seal. Different brands call it different things. It's sort of like fix a flat for a tire. And the idea is if you have a leak in your heating and air system, if the leak is small enough, but you can't find it, you know, if you did a leak find, you couldn't find it or however you tried to find it, but you have this customer that seems like every year, you know, they're losing refrigerant and you're going to give them a, a fix and you add this product to it. And again, just like fix a flat for a tire, if the leak is small enough, the product I have personally seen it work. But why is it controversial? Well, I do know years ago, a lot of those products were, especially if the system had contaminants, moisture, or just in general, a lot of these products that are designed to stop leaks have been known to supposedly ruin compressors and also metering devices. And in fact, it's such a controversial product that I have seen guys get on, you know, social media and maybe even this video, if you comment down below, guys will actually argue on whether or not it's a good product to use or not. My take on it is if you are a homeowner and you are considering using the product, I would definitely never put it in a system that is still under warranty, big time no-no. Uh, in fact, manufacturers do not want anything. They don't even want, you know, products like Boost Juice or AC Renew added to the system if it's still under warranty. But they definitely would never want Leak Seal added to that system if it's still under warranty. But if I've got a customer that, that you know, every year, especially with the way refrigerant has gotten price-wise, and they're just trying to get a little more life out of the system, I have no problems putting the product in myself. Again, I don't do it in every situation, but there are situations that, you know, if the customer's just trying to get by, I have seen it work and you add it to a system. So uh, I will say I've seen it not work though, you know? So just because you add it to a system does not mean that's it. You're not going to have to add refrigerant to that system anymore. So, you know, I would definitely uh, consider at least having a pro, see if they can find the leak possibly. And my general rule has always been, if you're having to add refrigerant to that system within a 12 month period twice. So if you do it say June of this year, and then you have to do it again before June of next year sometime, chances are that leak is too big and the product is just simply not gonna work anyway. Product two, I just touched on it, Boost Juice or AC Renew, depending on what brand you put in there, but basically these products that are meant to be added to systems that have quite a bit of mileage on them. I did a whole video on just the product Boost Juice alone. And years ago, I did a video on AC Renew. And the idea is if you've got a system that's, I'll use the analogy like a car. If you've got a, a system that's got over 200,000 miles on it, and you're trying to get some more life out of it. Well, with heating and air, if you add one of these products, Boost Juice to a heating and air system that's got quite a bit of mileage on it, uh, they make several claims, uh, some of them being it can extend the life of the system. Compressors will get quieter because they have to work less hard. And at times, the amp draw will go down. If you check the amp draw, how much energy it's using with your meter, and then you add the product, your amp draw should go down. Why is it controversial? Again, a lot of systems, you know, a lot of guys will claim, you know, don't be adding stuff to your system that wasn't designed to be there to start with. And a lot of heating and air guys will frown on adding stuff like that. Controversial product number three. A lot of air cleaners on the market right now are controversial. I do know that some of them have gotten in trouble for making claims that their product just simply doesn't deliver on. And when I say air cleaners, I just mean that as, you know, just a general overall umbrella topic when we're talking about ionizers or media filters electrostatic filters uv lights and just things like that i just think in general a lot of these products why are they controversial well some of them can be quite pricey the question becomes is it worth it am i going to actually get the value out of what i'm having installed i just told somebody uh tonight you know i was i was commenting back on someone's comment and i was basically telling them 
that, you know, 10 years ago, uh, you would install one of these products and you just kind of hope for the best. You know, you cross your fingers. I hope it works. I hope the air is cleaner. And, you know, I've had customers, they'll say, hey, you know, I was having breathing issues before and now I'm not since you put this product in there. But other than that, there was no way to really know. Could it have been placebo effect? Maybe. But those days are over. You know, I've done videos on some of the air monitors that we have now on the market and you can actually have your heating and air company do a air monitor reading of your home before and after you have that product installed. So you should be able to see a difference in the air after installing that product. Now we get back to, is the product worth what I'm paying for it? Now you can actually decide, wow, I do see a difference here. It was worth it. Why are these products controversial? Again, a lot of them are pricey and a lot of them, again, are making claims like that they kill certain viruses when they're not necessarily quite as effective as they say they are. Number four, surge protectors. I actually did not know that this was a controversial product until I talked about surge protection in a few of my videos. I've had people comment on my videos and say, oh, you're just taking people's money. You don't need surge protection, blah, blah, blah. I can tell you in the area that I live in, I, I guess is unique because we do have power surges. And what's odd to me is a lot of people know that. You know, a lot of people will protect their electronics. They'll buy strips that have power surge protection on them to protect their electronics. But then when you start talking about protecting other components in your home, then they're like, ah, you know, surge protection is not that big a deal. Why is it controversial? I actually have no idea. Power surges are a real thing. Even if you have good, clean electricity coming in your home, you can still have power outages or thunderstorms cause a power surge in your home and it's just simply not good for your electronics. It's not good for your heating and air system, circuit boards, things like that. And when that power surge comes through there, it can permanently damage your heating and air equipment. Number five, controversial products. There are products out there, I call them misters. They actually mist water. I remember years ago, we went to a water park and as we were standing in line for one of the rides, there were these misters of water that were just putting this fog in the air in the summer, if you will. And it felt great. You know, you were standing in line and you're like, oh, it's hot. You know, the sun's beating down. Walk. There's this mister blowing on me. And they were great. They actually make these for heating and air systems. And I've done other videos where I touched on that. I think it's more of a, a you know, more common thing that you're going to see in states that are super hot. You know, as you get down towards the southeast or if you get out towards one of the deserts, we don't really see them here in Virginia a whole lot, although I have purchased them just to dabble. And the idea is if your system is sitting out in the heat and the sun is beating down on it and it's doing all it can do, that mister will actually make that coil more effective. It can drop in temperature, remove heat from your home even better, blowing, you know, the cooler air. And so when you get really high temperatures outside, it can really push the head pressure of your refrigerant up really high. And, and when you install one of these misters on there, it brings it back down. You know, it, it makes it more manageable and your system doesn't have to work as hard. The idea is, say, if you take your finger and you swing it through the air, no problem, right? You know, if you're just feeling whatever the temperature is in the air. But if you lick that finger and you swing it through the air, that finger now is now wet and that's the temperature that the coil is going to feel, right? It's wet and it's got that air blowing across there. Why are they controversial? I think the biggest reason is, I don't think that anyone can really argue on whether or not they're effective, but if you have hard water or soft water or whatever, if you have something in your water that will cause more deterioration or buildup, calcium buildup, things like that on your outdoor unit, that's obviously not a good thing. They have gotten a little better with these. Some of the misters on the market come with a little filter that it'll filter the uh, water before it makes it to the mister. Would the money you'd be saving having that mister on your heating and air system be worth the extra deterioration or buildup? I don't know. If you're having your system maintained properly, then maybe it would be worth it. You know, that way you can have your system cleaned up from time to time anyway, and then you would still have the added benefit of having one of these misters. And then finally, number six of the 
most controversial products in the heating and air industry. And this one is, of course, drop-in refrigerants. What is a drop-in refrigerant? Ultimately, if that system was made to have a certain refrigerant in there, a drop-in refrigerant would be a refrigerant that you could now put in that system and it still operate. So for example, if you have, say, an old R22 system, there are drop-in refrigerants that you could remove the R22. In some cases, you might have to replace seals or the filter dryer and maybe even the oil, but ultimately be able to add this other refrigerant to that system and still get more life out of your system without having to replace it. Why are they controversial? Some of them are less reliable. Um, I've actually had competitors tell our customers after we explained all the pros and cons of doing a drop-in refrigerant. We had a company just a couple years ago tell the customer that us adding that drop-in refrigerant was the reason that the compressor failed. And you know, the system was like 20 years old. So I was like, come on, you know, stop it. To each their own. I mean, you may watch this video if you're in the heating and air industry and you may say, Josh, I've been told that too, that you know, the drop-in refrigerants are not good for the system. I think if you do everything you're supposed to do correctly and you're pulling good vacuum and you're replacing what you're supposed to, when you're switching refrigerants and doing a drop-in, I think you can ultimately get more life out of that system. Now, you know, what that life is, I don't know. You know, I don't think anyone knows. But we've had success with some of the drop-in refrigerants. I haven't tried them all. I don't intend to try them all. But I think there are times when it might make sense possibly do a drop-in refrigerant versus other options, whether it be, you know, pay the extra money for the original refrigerant or pay the extra money and have the system entirely replaced. Anyway, that's it guys. That's the six most controversial products in the heating and air industry. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.